Hello and welcome to another book is avec moi. So this week I finished two books but both of those books were for the book Booktube Prize and therefore I won't be talking about those. You know that leaves me with uh, other things which are books that I'm currently reading but before I get to the books that I'm currently reading and uh, by currently reading I mean actively engaging with um, I would like to say that I'm going to put this one aside this month. Uh, I initially uh, wanted to read this as part of the seasonal quartet group read organized by Sarah of Hardcover Huts and I've been uh, reading the seasonal quartet with the group um, for the past three months. So from autumn and then spring and then winter. Um, and those three books have been really great. This book, I would say, tone-wise, it's pretty similar as well, but I don't think that this book is going to work this month, because largely because of whatever that is going around me, and I don't think I really can focus while reading this book. Um, I think that right now I just want a little bit more structure. I crave for some structure in my life, I suppose, right now. and. Uh, Alice Smith's books don't usually provide structure because her writing tends to be very, very free, boundless, and uh, not very conventional. Uh, so I think I'm going to read this one some other time. So I'm going to drop it for a while, set it aside. This is not a DNF. Um, rather, I just don't really want to read this book knowing that I could have enjoyed it some other time and, you know, very likely wasting my time reading it, you know, and not enjoying it. So, yeah, this is it for summer. What I'm currently reading right now is uh, this one by Carson McCullers. This is The Heart is a Lonely Hunter and uh, this is a buddy read with Madeline of Made with Books. Uh, this book uh, was some something I started reading last week and then uh, yeah so far I think it's pretty nice. I'm not sure what is the direction this book uh, going to take in the, you know, in the novel. Uh, basically central to this book is this uh, character named John Singer and uh, this story takes place sometime in the 1920s or 30s I think in the deep south and John Singer lives in this particular small town and he is a deaf mute person. He had a friend but he's a, his friend uh, who is also a, a mute person he has been sent to live to uh, to a to an asylum a mental asylum and so John Singer pretty much lives alone uh, in his uh, in his lodging and uh, he would just kind of at the start of this book he would just kind of hang out in the cafe at the at the diner I think and uh, he's just sitting there and there are also other characters in this book. We have a, a girl, we have the owner of the diner, and then we also have a, a doctor who, uh, a, a black doctor. And I'm not exactly sure how this story is going to uh, move forward uh, later. I'm, I'm somewhere after like one third of this book. And I'm really curious to see uh, because even the blurb does not really tell us uh, how this story is going to move forward. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but basically what the blurb kind of suggests is that all of these characters, they kind of uh, turn to John Singer in a way and uh, somewhat makes him, you know, as, as, as their confidants of sorts. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, it's it's also kind of interesting when you think about the title in here. There is certainly some sort of some sense of loneliness that you could detect from this uh, this title. And certainly, while reading this book, there is this sense of weird quietness, uh, this sense of aloofness, uh, especially when it comes to many of the characters in this book. So I think. Loneliness is going to play a big part in this book. Looking forward to see whether that is going to be true or not. I'm also reading this book. This is Three Daughters of Eve by Elif Shafak. Uh, this is a buddy read with Berna of Berna's Bookish Adventures. Uh, this is going to be my sixth Elif Shafak book. This book, 
I would say, just like many other Elif Shafak books that I have read, I really like the writing. It feels very compassionate and you don't get a strong sense of judgment from whatever she's writing about. And uh, you, 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 you can easily feel sympathy or even empathy towards many of the characters, even though some of the characters may, may have uh, opinions or uh, views that strongly, uh, m you know, goes against what you believe in. And I just really, really love that. It makes you feel, you know, sometimes it makes you feel bad for being too judgmental about other people. But yeah, uh, that's kind of like the effect the writing of this book has on me. So this book, I also do not know what it's going to be about, um, but essentially uh, this book is about this woman. Her name is Peri. She's a Turkish woman who is also a, a Muslim herself, um, but at the same time she is not very devout in this book. But essentially uh, I think what this book is going to do is that it's going to explore Peri's life while she is a uh, student at Oxford and over there she meets with a few characters, she meets with uh, other friends. Uh, there are two friends that we would expect to get to know later in this book and then uh, there is also this professor and apparently something, I don't know, scandalous or something uh, that cause the professor to be disgraced happens later so it's going to be something big and another thing another element that i think we will explore later also is the uh especially when it comes to perry as a character the contemplation and the meditation and the concept of god or you know what god is or something like that so i'm really curious to see how all of that is going to come together and how it really uh how it is going to um you know, bleed into uh, characters, you know, different characters in this book. Um, yeah, really looking forward to see that. So last week I also said that I'm on a book buying ban, but... You know, um, you, you can't resist this. <laughs> This is this is Toni Morrison, uh, and my copy of Beloved, and this is something that I just got last week. Yeah, so, and I got it cheap. You know, it was an offer. It, this one is like what, uh, less than twenty ringgit, I suppose. And I also have this one by Isabel Allende, and you know, how can you resist this cover? Seriously. Uh, this is probably the, the the most interesting cover that I have, one of the most interesting covers that I have on my shelf right now. This is of Love and Shadows, and based on the blurb, it is about this man and a woman who is in a relationship or something, they kind of fall in love, and then they stumble upon a mass grave of murdered people, people murdered by the police. So yeah, this... You know, I, I really like this this sort of um, incongruity between the cover and what it says in the blurb or possibly inside the book. You know, I, it's just sound really interesting. And, you know, there's actually an image down here that seems to suggest some sort of a scene where, you know, you know people killing people kind of stuff. And so perhaps, yeah, that, that part would you know, likely allude to that mass grave thingy, and this book has been made into a powerful film, so I suppose these are from the film. And also, yeah, I, I just find this overlaying of, you know, sex and violence in the same place, it's just, it's just interesting. Well, you know, it's, it's very cringy, but all the same. <laughs> I just really like this one. Now another one that I do feel very very interesting, but not this kind of interesting, is another book that I actually found yesterday while I was like just uh, gallivanting <laughs> off at the mall. And then I went to the bookstore and uh, I found this. It's, it, it, it won the Women's Prize for Fiction, but I can't rem uh, I don't remember which year. I didn't, uh, I didn't check. 
but this one is by Lisa McIrony. This is The Glorious Heresies. And, uh, you know, I just like, first of all, physically, I just really like how orange this book looks. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it looks really chaotic. And uh, I actually looked at the blurb, and I found that the story sounds super, super interesting. So it's kind of about this woman who unintentionally kills a person, who intrudes into her home, and then... Uh, she is kind of like, I don't know, I suppose she's she's scared and panicking or something like that. And it says here that Lucky, she's just rec reconnected with her estranged son, Jimmy, because as the most feared gangster in Cork, he certainly has the tools to sort out the mess. So Jimmy enlists his boyhood buddy, Tony, who with six kids and a love of the bottle could certainly do with the money even if his teenage son Ryan is far too keen to grow up so he can become a gangster himself. And all is going to plan until Georgie, the girlfriend of the hapless intruder, starts to wonder where he went. Ellipsis. So I think that this one is, you know, I look at this and I thought that, oh, it, it, it looks really good. It sounds really good. And, um, and also this year I plan to read as many as possible. Uh, uh, the winners for the Women's Prize for Fiction. So this is like one of the books that won the prize. And yeah, it's and it was on offer. It was on, uh, it was sold for 17 ringgit and it had this like 17 ringgit this discount sticker, which I immediately took off. Um, but yes, this one was cheap. And I'm really lucky that I found it. Uh, and yeah, um, so yeah book buying ban <laughs> so much for book buying ban so that's it for uh this week's update and um, maybe i'll see you again in a different video uh if not until the next bookish avec moi but yeah uh if i if i end up making another video in between uh i think that would be great too we'll see we'll see what happens so until then take care thanks for watching and Bye-bye.